finding in their patter the familiar joy of just this other. The well-worn glove its hand, the foot its favorite slipper. You're looking kind of peaked. How you feeling? She was plump. Been better, he admitted, but better now that you're here. They grope to find the litany they used to know by heart. The house and life they shared now passed. No talk of his impending end, of her need for someone to push her chair. Too soon the midnight hour arrived. Pop, you need your rest. Mom, too. His eyes begged for another moment from the son who must take away his better half. Then he took her dried up veiny hand in his own withered grasp and smiled at her across the binding years. Now you take care of yourself. She for once had no reply, just a gaze far deeper than the word could plumb. So they wheeled her away and left him in the starch white bed memorizing in her face all that he felt dear. Now something happy. This is about the daffodils that um, I have in a wild bed of them in my yard. From last year, we had a late winter last year, not just cold, but snow, if you remember. I watched the green skewed sprout and stretch another above another round of snow. Drenched in sleet, their green blades too determined, too resolved to grow. They would not be hindered in their coming out. The first were opened by some welcome days. Then came the late storm, thick and blowing. Heavy snow clicked on their early blossoms. I sent a picture to a friend. They'll freeze, she said, but I replied, not them. Still I was sad to see them so weighed down their lemon faces doubled to the ground. Then two days later, when they were still so low, I thought that winter, refusing to give in, had won this belated round. But then the other night, despite the dark, there was a feeble brightness in their bed. Next morning, daffodils were standing proud, a cloud of cream and yellow in the sun. Their longed-for faces now remark, spring is won. Students. 
I feel like you're a student now because I learn so much when I go to classes. I still take classes now, and many of them are through my church. So I've written about springtime, but a springtime that was snowy time. I'll start with that, and then I'll be writing something that relates to my learning about education for ministry, which I'm doing some of now. First is Snowy Day. Spring was a memorable haze of snowy days, with blends of footprints on wandering ways. As I sit and gaze out my window above, mounds of white that fill the night and cloud my sight, I remember being snowbound in fear of flight. Emergency sirens and scattered blue lights followed me home where, despite no power, life was cozy that night. Sharing the light, your arms held me tight. Oh, where are those snowy days? And the next one is a prayer that is my offering. It has been published recently on the Dyson website, meaning it can be read by 56 churches in this area that are Episcopal churches because they have, have a Dyson website as well as the church website. I've really been influenced a lot by traveling to different churches, by the interfaith dialogue that you have sponsored here, and about the uh, chances that we have to learn about each other and our faith journeys. Prayers of thankfulness and a call to reconstruct freedom. Prayers of thankfulness fill my heart during Easter as I see children shining eyes and parents tender hugs, magnificent ocean sunrises, worshipers lifting the chalice to honor sacred bloodshed. As I hear greetings shared among family and friends near and far away, mountain breezes blowing blossoms, fish jumping in a neighbor's pond, bells chiming and choirs rejoicing, praises for the resurrection of our Lord. Yet, amid the amens comes a call. Voices of our presiding bishop and other church leaders call us to persist in prayer for our sisters and brothers who live in war-torn anguish of their struggle for growth toward freedom. Let us persist in the name of Jesus. Hello. Hello. And 
name is Jane Pilson. I'm the vice president of the Pokemon Writers Group. And if anyone here is interested in joining our group, Mary Ruth over here has some brochures of information. As, as I was saying, uh, if anyone is interested in joining the Writers Group, Mary Ruth has some brochures of information that you can pick up after this. My first poem is called Cicadas. You all remember the cicadas that were around a couple of summers ago. Remember me when the cicadas come again. If you are here and I am gone. Seventeen years is a long time and the years are adding up. Red eyes and iridescent wings filling the air with their mating songs. Noise to many, beautiful to some. There are more of them this time than last, because time before last, I had a little cat. Maggie loves cicadas in her own way. When one of them began to sing, her little nose went up, and she pointed like a hunting dog. As if pulled by a magnet in her nose, step by step, paw by paw, she advanced, until pounce, crunch, crunch. Somebody said they taste like shrimp. Maggie never had time to tell. The next one would sing out, the little nose would go up, and she was off again. If you are here and I am not, remember me when the cicadas come again. The next one is called Unfriend. There's a reason I haven't answered your request to be friends on Facebook. In my memory, you are still 18, and there's an 18-year-old me there with you. I don't want to see your bright eyed hair turn gray, your smile lined with wrinkles like mine. It's bad enough with I am old. Can't you stay 18? <laughs> This one's called Theological Speculation. In heaven, mosquito bites don't itch. They still bite because good mosquitoes have to go somewhere when they die too. But in heaven, the people don't mind being bitten. <laughs> and this one is a Halloween poem called The Rain. Finally, I am as thin as I always wanted to be. I managed to lose not only my fat, my skin and bones as well. As I flown over the cemetery, I ask only one thing. Does this ectoplasm make my thighs look too big? <laughs>
so I call upon his name. When I say I am Christian, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's good grace somehow. The next, the next poem I have is Get Somebody Else by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. The Lord had a job for me, but I had so much to do. I said, you get somebody else or wait till I get through. I don't know how the Lord came out, but he seemed to get along. But I felt kind of sneaking like, no, I've done God wrong. One day, I needed the Lord, needed him right away. But he never answered me at all, and I could hear him say, down in my accusing heart, I've got too much to do. You get somebody else, or wait till I get through. Now, when the Lord has a job for me, I never tries to shirk. I drop what I have to hand and does the good Lord's work. And my affairs can run along or wait till I get through. Nobody else can do the work that God has marked for you. The next poem is entitled, The Road Not Taken, by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fast and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for not, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally laid, and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads to way, I doubt it if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. How y'all doing today? Y'all looking good. <laughs> My name is Isaac Swanson. I'm a student here at uh, PH. And, uh, I'm reading a poem that my nephew, Joshua Harrison, had written. I just want to say, hey, Mama, and my sister. <laughs> <laughs> the, the poem is called Broken Pieces. Broken from so many attempts to be whole, the death is stemming from women who stole the glow. Taking a piece of me every time they went far after coming close, they chose to know me intimately, and then they chose to go. Or was high, they rode with speed. Or I chose to leave. After capturing a leaf, after the leaf, smashing the sea, whispering promises, dripping with lasting sweetness. After affording a water brief reprieve, complimented of the ease at which it was received, I chose to leave. Doesn't it seem pro for me? Thank you. Well, say hello to everybody. I am Mary E. Ferris. I've been a member of the People in Practice Group for 15 years. And I want to share um, a few of the poems that I wrote. The first one is, she needs us. She sits there taking so much abuse from those who are supposed to be loving and caring. Her features are distorted. She looks down in shame. Sadness is her only emotion. She is almost blind. Her head is all clogged up with snarl. 
Her body has been filled with all kinds of debris. She has been crying out to us for a long time, begging us to stop hurting her. But what do we do? We hurt her more. We expose her to pollutions and all kinds of poisons, causing her to become weak and unstable. Now her condition is critical. Destruction has completely taken over, but she struggles with the pain because she is fighting for us. Our existence depends on what happens to her. She loves us. We are her children. We owe this lady a lot and she deserves our respect. Picking up, cleaning up, and recycling waste can make a big difference in making this place a safe and healthy home. That would put the smile back on her face. If we all work together, we can nurse her back to the way she was. But we have to, first of all, be aware of her desperation. We have to realize that she needs us and we need her. We have to make the change. The time to do it is right now. Mother Earth is in serious trouble. If we don't have her, she is going to die. Just let me have another slice of that pie. A big old ham bone, a pot of pinto beans, a hunk of cornbread, and some greasy turnip greens. Macaroni and cheese, don't you forget, I haven't had my potato salad yet. Mmm, those crispy chicken legs sure are tempting. And the plate is getting mighty empty. My plate is getting too full. My biscuit just hit the floor. I was trying to reach those fried apples. I just wanted a wee bit more. I'd have to get another plate, because those candy yams just can't wait. Oh, I didn't see those fish cakes. They're still hot. And I need to see what's in that big black pot. Ooh, I need room for the sweets, but I haven't tasted all the meats. They'll call a tow truck to take me to their home in the sky. <laughs> but Lord, before I go, please make room for just one more piece of that coconut. <laughs> Speak to me, my love. Embrace me with the melody of your voice. Touch me with those lovely eyes. Hold this moment within your heart forever. Now that the weather's warm and the birds are singing their song, let the joy of our connection keep us forever together. As we snuggle close, gazing up at the soft white clouds, while the aroma of the fresh flowers caress our senses, while the rabbits and the squirrels play, and the tiny ants and insects are busy preparing for another season. I long to feel forever your presence, to know that I will always be able to reach out and you will be there. So never leave me, my love, and don't take away the times when we can build memories. As we take a mental picture of the beauty that surrounds us, always know that we have the greatest gift of all. So speak to me, my love. Embrace me with the melody of your voice. Touch me with those lovely eyes. Hold on to this moment within your heart forever. going to get to hear my attitude change about time and understand my dilemma about waiting. The first poem I'm going to read is called Time. It's upsetting that time's hands couldn't have been rewound. Failures and mistakes that I have made make me bound. Changes I desire, but due to previous flaws and actions, joyous moments I fail to acquire. Done deeds I regret, pain is who I am, stupidity I feel, but I must learn to win with the cards life may deal. Destiny I fearfully see, I wonder if I work towards success, if God will accept my plea, 
because time is really, really killing me. I never knew time could send a flow of luck along my way soon, or it could bring more chaos and cause me to act as a loon. Teaching a task time's hands have done, by now I should know the math. Trouble plus stubbornness equals danger, and that isn't the half. Do you see my tears, or are those eyes blind? Joys are hard for me to find. Mistakes and mishaps at the drop of a dime. It would be greatly appreciated if your hands could ease my mind. For those two uneven hands have toiled and troubled me for years. Because of your blind eyes, I'm glad you don't have ears. Time, if you happen to have ears, they're inconsiderate or deaf, or exactly like your cold heart with no sympathy left. Time, the, your misery has traveled deep within, and I can only request your hands give time at least one backward spin. I wait in the store. I wait for a call. I wait for an email. I wait at the stoplight. I'm just always waiting. And right now, at this very moment, I wait for you. For a night, for a year, I wait for you here. In the dark and through the light, I wait for you with all my might. In the storm and when it rains, my wait remains the same. I wait in the morning and afternoon to see one day if love will bloom. I tell myself, sweetheart, we'll be here soon. Dreams of you and me keep me lively and awake. I wait as long as it may take. I wait as if I've never waited before. This time the wait is worth so much more. More laughter and more care. I make a space in my heart and keep you there. Your time, your joy, I look to share. To hold your hand, to see you smile makes this wait worth the while. Even though I wait, I wait without guarantee, but I hope you care enough to wait for me. I cling tight to a vision of me and you to keep this waiting heart faithful and true, and without hesitation, I'll wait for you. That concludes our poetry summit. I want to thank each and every one of you again for coming out. I do want you to please take advantage of the lunch that's been provided by Patrick Henry through the Brown Bag Seminar. And also stay a little while because we will be doing door prizes. But again, thank you all for coming. And